Uh, this is the second hour, but part one of prototyping. Uh, we're going to be uh, covering a lot of really awesome things in here. So things like uh, the block grid, uh, source ordering, buttons, typography, callouts, and forms. Uh, the next uh, hour of that, we'll take a look at more of those navigation patterns, uh, some of those uh, visibility classes, and a little bit more with those media queries there. So uh, today, we're just really talking uh, in this hour about some of those basic pieces to uh, quickly get your website up and running, um, prototyping it out there, checking it out, and testing it to make sure it actually works before you really get into styling uh, all those things. So uh, we'll go ahead and move into the block grid. So we talked a little bit about uh, the grid in the, the last hour there, uh, but there's something that we, we have called the block grid. Um, and it's a little bit unique, but super helpful. Um, the more you use it, I use it all the time for my, my projects here. Uh, it's really great um, kind of tool to have there. So, uh, you know, it's kind of perfect for galleries or anywhere that you need even columns. So they clear themselves so they won't wrap oddly. So it's not really like a display inline block. Uh, they'll just clear. Um, which means it kind of resets when you want it to. Um, and it, it's, you know, showing a group of similar elements when you don't know how many elements you'll actually have. For example, uh, backend generated groups. So if you're working with uh, a large data set, you're not really sure how many, you know, uh, uh, thumbnails are going to be shown on a page, uh, but you know you want something to be seven columns wide and you just want it to kind of fill that for uh, the large screens, uh, then maybe five columns on smaller. Uh, it's just really simple to get up and running with that um, there. So as Foundation 6, uh, it is part of the main grid uh, syntax uh, on the docs there. Um, but yeah, here's an example of what that really looks like. Uh, so you can see uh, maybe, you know, this is, uh, I think Zurb was under construction here, but uh, if we have a photo stream and we're not quite sure how many uh, photos are really taking place in there, uh, you know, we just want to divide it to maybe three columns and just dump as many items as we want in there. So um, we can do that pretty easily. You know, maybe we have this, um, you know, more advanced areas too. Uh, but yeah, you, you really typically see this with thumbnail images. Uh, anything with the image tag or, you know, large icons <clears throat> in there. I mean, you don't have to use those, uh, but that's probably the most common pattern uh, that we see that online. So you can even add some more advanced uh, kind of navigation and, and styling to that. Uh, but here we have an example of, of um, you know, I guess some, some articles here uh, with that. So again, this is kind of in, in two columns. Uh, and between these two, you could kind of split it, you know, three on whatever screen sizes you want, three columns, and then breaking it down to two on uh, those other screen sizes that you want. So maybe on, on small, you want, uh, since the screen size is a little bit smaller, you can uh, pretty easily uh, have this kind of two up view, that's what we call it. So um, a bit of a history lesson uh, with this. So Foundation 5, our, our previous version of Foundation, um, this was the syntax for the block grid. So we still had our, our row, uh, which you guys are probably familiar with by now. We had our small 12 columns. So that means it's, you know, overall spanning that, that full width. Uh, and then we have our block grid nested inside of our, our you know, row there. Uh, and our columns. So we had a UL, since it is you know, a list of, of items, essentially. Um, whoops. Uh, so it is a, a list of items there. Uh, and then we have our individual elements kind of resting, uh, nested right in between there. Um, the syntax really revolves around the classes of, you know, decide what screen size, uh, you know, what it is you want, and then how, how wide it is there. So on small, uh, we would have a kind of two up view, so two columns. Uh, and large, the block grid would have three columns there. So on larger screens, uh, we would have you know, these three uh, within that first row, uh, and then these three within the second row. Uh, it does go from you know, left to right, just filling in uh, those columns uh, there as well. So uh, you know, not, not too bad of syntax, but we thought we could do better with Foundation 6. Um, and you can see it's you know, already a little bit you know, easier to read there. So what we did was we combined the row and columns. Uh, you know, this is a, a block grid. So let's really make sure that it, it kind of functions as an alternate grid view. Um, and it's much cleaner to write. Uh, it just kind of makes sense. So when you're writing uh, the, the block grid in Foundation 6, we have our overall wrapping row. Uh, and then we define our, uh, you know, column count there. So where previously we used to say, oh, we want it to be, you know, an actual block grid here 
uh, we basically know that we're using a, a grid since we are using the row there. Um, and then we just kind of define, uh, you know, how many things do we want to show there? So we use the kind of uh, phrase, you know, uh, screen size and then up and then the number that we want to show there. And then within those, uh, we just wrap it with a column and you can put anything else you want in there. Uh, essentially, those, those are our columns kind of moving through that. Um, but that just gives it uh, a kind of container to live in and those images to live uh, you know, within there or whatever content you'd like to put you know, in there. So again, you know, small up to and large up. That works with medium and uh, even custom screen sizes or, or keywords that you want. Uh, Foundation 6 is flexible enough if you want to uh, I think in the previous round, we, we kind of talked about, you know, creating those custom screen size classes. So if you wanted, uh, I think, Smedium or, uh, you know, XX small, uh, Foundation 6 is smart enough to, um, you know, add those in there progressively. Uh, it's a little bit more advanced there, uh, but, you know, just get up and running. We Out of the box, it has small, medium, large, and extra large, I think. And again, those column counts there. Uh, so let's take a look at the code. So hopping over to CodePen, uh, we fired up a little CodePen here as well. Uh, so let's take a quick look at uh, the code first. Uh, again, you can see uh, we have our you know, row column, we just have a title, uh, kind of ignore that there. Uh, but the point, uh, you know, the main content here is that row, small up two, medium up three, um, and that's that's medium and up. We we have those three uh, columns there. So it it would you know show three columns on those large screens as well. Uh, and then we just start filling in content. So we can add as many things as we want in there, and it should uh, you know just kind of work. So taking a look at at how that works, back out the screen a little bit. Uh, so on these larger screen size, um, so medium and up, we have three columns moving across here. Um, you see we have some different sized, uh, you know, images in here. We're just using placeholder.it. Hold, it's really great for prototyping. Um, if you guys don't use it, um, you know, you, it's it's just something we use. You can use place kitten or place cat. I forget, I forget what it is. I think place kitten. Uh, it follows the same syntax, but you get little cats in there instead of uh, these numbers. But if you want to get a little less distracting uh, for maybe showing off to your client or, you know, a review, uh, we, we prefer, you know, placehold it. Um, and you just give those dimensions as uh, this URL and just kind of works, which is awesome. So um, here you can kind of see the different uh, you know, resolutions of that on larger screens. Uh, as we're moving down, uh, we'll hit you know, small up, we'll hit that two column right here. Uh, so once we kind of hit that small screen size, you can see that it, it you know, just, just works there. Um, taking a look underneath, you can see that uh, you know, we have an example of the medium grid. So we can't really define, you know, exactly how many columns there are within there. So uh, we have our small six, medium four columns, uh, and, you know, it's just a lot of syntax to add within here. Um, and you can see it doesn't clear quite as well. So that's the big thing that's really awesome about um, that block grid, is you don't get these weird kind of floated over if an item is a little bit larger um, it's that that's where block grid really shines so if you want you know individual you know elements to really uh, you know, take up that row and respect uh, kind of its boundaries there per row um, that's when you really want to use it uh, the normal grid you can see does have that little little bit of uh, an issue and that's just um, you know how float grids work uh, on small you know not a big deal uh, and that's just how uh, you know this one lined up there uh, but you can see on the uh, example here, we can start adding some more elements in here. So um, we can start, uh, if you think about this from a programmatic standpoint, uh, maybe we do have an odd number uh, that, that doesn't fill the row entirely there. Um, it just starts kind of filling in there uh, and then, you know, taking that there. Um, so again, pretty simple, already, you know, much less uh, markup. Uh, it kind of respects those uh, boundaries of the row. Uh, so really great for if you have items that you're also not quite sure the, the size. Uh, you can always use uh, a more JavaScript-based, uh, we have a, a tool called uh, Equalizer, which I think we'll, we'll talk about 
uh, in the last hour there where we can make sure that each element is exactly the same height even if it's not really uh, the same height loaded in. Um, use a little bit of JS with that. Uh, but if you don't really want to use that, um, you know, the block grid is, is pretty great for that as well. So again, we use this all the time, uh, really mainly for galleries, and it's, it's pretty quick to get uh, prototyping there. All right, so the next area we're going to talk about is source ordering.